Flat Earth Proof 10 The Legends It goes without having to say that every culture has described the Earth as being flat and motionless. Ancient sailors and astronomers throughout the ages hadn't noticed any hints alluding to a globe, but despite their efforts, the knowledge they had collected systemically over the ages was eventually neglected and then largely forgotten. Though we will cover the how, let's first have a look through some of these ancient descriptions and see how they tend to describe the world we live on. The ancient Egyptians perceived the earth to be a flat plain personified in the Necher Geb. Arching over the earth was Nut, the personification of the sky every morning gave birth to Ra, the sun. Beyond this was the realm called Duat, the place where deceased souls would go and await rebirth, while beyond the universe was the infinite expanse of the waters of Nu. The Vedic spiritualists described a spherical universe, one out of an infinite number, with the earth plane in the center dividing the heavenly half from subterranean worlds. The earth plane itself is a series of concentric rings of alternating ocean and land, with the central island the abode of humanity. At the very center of this universe is the cosmic axial mountain, Mount Sumeru, atop of which are cities of the gods. Compare this to Mount Olympus in the Greek legends. Further in Vedic cosmology, the sun, moon, and planets all have their orbits in layers above the flat plane revolving around the central pole star, above which is the abode of the Creator. Another ancient worldview is that of the ancient Scandinavians, who, according to the sagas, saw humans as inhabiting Midgard, the most central of many worlds. Surrounding Midgard is a great ocean which itself is encircled by the cosmic serpent Jormungandr. In the center of Midgard stands Yggdrasil, the cosmic tree whose branches connect the world of Midgard to other worlds of fire, ice, giants, and elves, with its roots reaching into the nether worlds and its upper branches reaching high into the heavenly worlds and Asgard, where Valhalla is, while Sol the sun and Mani the moon forever chase each other over and around Midgard. One detailed description of the chase between sun and moon is exemplified in the fable of the tortoise and the hare, in which the hare, who represents the sun, starts the race out arrogant and speedily, overtaking the tortoise as the sun does the moon during the northern summer months, then slowing down in the winter when the steady paced moon once again overtakes the sun in orbit. The pass of the sun and moon above the flat disk earth as well as lunar phases were encoded in the Chinese yin yang symbol. The ancient Mesopotamians also believed in a flat disk earth, which the surviving Babylonian account describes as having been formed from half the slain body of Tiamat, the primordial chaos, with the other half of her body being stretched out to form the skies and the netherworld, where all souls went to await after death. Situated above the pole star was the throne of the gods, and whilst the entire earth was surrounded by a salt ocean, a ridge of high mountains encircling the edge kept the waters from overflowing. Following Abraham out of Mesopotamia, all Abrahamic religions follow in describing the world as being fashioned in six days of evening and morning, and being fixed and immovable. The Hebrew cosmology describes the sun and moon as being set in the sky and beneath the earth was the realm of Sheol where deceased souls await in silence. Here are just some selections in regard to the nature of the cosmos translated directly from the Hebrew texts. He encircles a boundary upon the face of the waters unto the end of light and darkness. Who founded the earth upon her foundations she shall not totter forever and ever. It is he who sits upon the circle of the earth, who stretches out the skies like a curtain, and spreads it out like a tent to dwell in. Is not God in the height of the heaven? And see the head of stars, how high is he? In addition, the first creation account of Genesis describes Elohim as fashioning the firmament, the Hebrew word rakira, implying the hammering of metal into a sheet 
denoting a solid sky shield. Further accounts in the Hebrew canon describe the sun as stopping in the sky for about the length of a day and even retrograding by 10 degrees on a sundial. The Arabic revelation describes a similar cosmology. And he has cast in the earth firm mountains lest it shake with you, and rivers and roads so that you may be guided. Have we not made the earth a resting place, and the mountains as pegs? Who created seven heavens in layers, you don't see in the creation of the most merciful any fault. So return your vision, can you see any flaw? Then return your vision a second time, your vision will return to you humbled when fatigued. And it is he who created the night and the day, and the sun and the moon, all in orbit, are swimming. I was only able to cover a handful of these ancient world descriptions in this episode, but it must be noted that nearly all of these beliefs, with the exceptions of those absorbed and bastardized by the Church of Rome, have been hunted down and suppressed worldwide with the surviving of these descriptions written off by their own institutions as either figurative or ancient ignorance. While the colonialists and missionaries of the European empires were of course all formally dispatched by their respective monarchs, they were all under the thumb of the brotherhoods operating from beneath the Vatican. In reality, there is only this one empire in the world today. Of course, they began by clearing out the library of Egypt and burning down the building. In Scandinavia, natives who didn't renounce their beliefs in exchange for the cross of Christianity were shackled to rocks in bays and left to drown as the tides slowly ebbed in. Once the British established their standards in India, holy men, Ayurvedic doctors, and even just ordinary people who refused to wage work were rounded up and put in the very first insane asylums. The Chinese were so well versed in the knowledge of the earth and spirituality that it took the Jesuit spies years of scheming in order to devise plans that would ultimately displace traditional Chinese philosophy with Western science and ultimately communism, not to mention having pushed opium on the people for decades. Now, the first person credited as describing the ball earth in orbit around the sun was Pythagoras of Samos, to whose school Freemasonry traces their origins, and whose idea wasn't even able to convince the populace until it curiously resurfaced 2,000 years later, shortly after the supposed discovery of the new world, when the Vatican vehemently began to displace original cultures worldwide. So investigate the subject for yourself and ask questions.